Godfrey, you've been recently appointed as the Africa-wide coordinator of RESACS, which is CADEP's regional strategic analysis and knowledge support system. Now, looking at the CADEP implementation process, where does the research of RESEX come in? And could you illustrate RESEX supporting role with a practical example? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, the role of RESEX is um, in supporting CADAP implementation is to bring to the table um, quality knowledge and information to guide uh, regional economic communities and countries in formulating uh, national or regional investment plans, implementing them, monitoring, as well as reporting. So in a general sense, that is what research ought to, uh, is doing to help uh, regions and countries. Now, with regard to a specific example on the role of research, um, as recent as earlier this week, I received um, a request by the African Union Commission in partnership with the African Pan-African Parliament in South Africa. They are organizing uh, a meeting for chairpersons of the Agriculture Committees of Parliament, and they wanted to be able to report on the performance of African countries on the two key indicators of CADAP. That is the 6% growth and the 10% allocation of budget. So African Union wanted to uh, ensure that they have this information, which they can present these parliamentarians. And they requested mm -hmm. research to be able to provide that information to them in a very simple, uh, easy way to communicate to these members of parliament. And fortunately, we were ready for them because we just produced the 2012 annual trends report and it had that information. So all we had to do was send them the information and they were quite happy with, the, with what is provided. So from your perspective, where do you see the key areas uh, of RESAC's work in the coming years now? Is there a newly evolving focus area maybe? Well, before talking about the new areas, I think we need to recognize the area where we have made the greatest strength. And it has been the monitoring and the evaluation. Uh, basically, tracking progress of the implementation of CADAP on the continent, uh, reporting through the annual trends report. I think that has been our biggest achievement. And looking forward, we would like to continue with that. Um, in the coming years, uh, in addition to continuing with the annual trends and outlook report at regional um, and continental level, we are taking that to the country level. So member countries are also beginning to produce their own annual trends report, uh, and that is a good tool to be used at country level. So we would like that to move forward. Now, with regard to new areas of work, RESAC is involved in helping countries to establish national tax nodes. Now, the objective of, of that is to strengthen capacity at national level, for technical analysis, for monitoring, for reporting at country level, for improving peer review and national dialogue in the interest of improving the quality of policy making and also accountability at that level. So we look at strengthening country tax nodes as another big piece of work for research in the coming years. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could explain quickly what a national sax node is. Now, a national sax node, the way we envisage it, is um, a network of individuals and institutions at country level that are involved in agricultural policy research. Now, these can be composed of a policy and planning unit in a Ministry of Agriculture, which can be the center or core of a national tax node. But then the network is composed of data providers, for example, National Bureau of Statistics. It can involve national policy research institutions. It can involve um, universities and also private sector organizations and civil society all coming together in a network to improve the quality of policy making 
planning and monitoring of agriculture policy in a particular country. Mm -hmm. So, um, where do you see the particular relevance of evidence based policy and programming processes? This is where RESAX is supposed to work at that area, and that's the link to CADEP, isn't it? What's the particular relevance? Well, if I can draw your attention to the formulation of national agriculture investment plan in the more than 30 countries that have uh, developed their CADAP related investment plans, almost all of them have used evidence to be able to inform the design of those investment plans and to make the best choice of invest investment that will bring about improved productivity and food security. And one of the organizations that has been at the forefront of helping countries with evidence has been the International Food Policy Research Institute, IFPRI. Um, certainly almost all the 15 member states of ECOWAS did benefit from IFPRI policy research to inform their national investment plan. In the commercial region, over half of the countries that have signed the investment plan have also had to use um, IFPRI-related research. In addition to IFPRI, but there are also other um, research organizations at country level, at regional level, and almost all countries have had to draw on the research and the evidence that has been carried out to inform their, the choice of investment. So clearly, um, having policy research that brings evidence to the table is quite important, uh, especially during the process of formulation of investment plans, but also we are seeing for countries that already have their investment plans during uh, monitoring and also national dialogues and review, evidence is called for um, in, in those respects. Now, Godfrey, you already mentioned that you just recently published the annual Trends and Outlook report. Yes. One of the major findings was that the productivity levels of African agriculture recovered and are catching up with the levels of the early 1960s. Um, what do you think? Is this a temporary phenomenon or can we expect productivity levels to rise further in Africa? Yeah, first of all, it's true, yes, the, our annual trends and outlook report 2012 does point out that overall productivity has increased from the mid 80s to the mid 2000s, and that's a good thing for African agriculture. But as you correctly said, it is more or less recovering or catching up um, uh, to the levels of the 1950s. So that is a, a finding. I don't think it is a temporary phenomenon. Uh, for several reasons. Uh, one, in the last 10, 15 years, we have seen increased interest and investment by African government in agriculture. So that is a strong, a, a strong piece of um, um, uh, evidence to think about. But also, uh, pro following the 2000, I think 2008 World Bank uh, report, um, that highlighted the importance of agriculture in, in, in economic transformation, we have seen global interest in agriculture at the policy level, but also now we are beginning to observe um, interest at the private sector level, um, private sector getting interested in African agriculture. So the combination of um, um, global interest, national and continental level commitment, uh, we, we think these will translate into more sustainable investment that, than we have seen before. Uh, sadly, even national level uh, private sector, um, individual investors, companies, even fin public, uh, private financial institutions are increasingly getting interested in financing agriculture. So in addition to public sector investment, when we see uh, rising trends of private sector investment in the sector. We believe that, that this time round, uh, the benefits are likely to last longer than before when predominantly it was public sector uh, financing. So in other words, even if we see uh, private sec public sector um, funding uh, stagnating or declining in some cases, uh, the, the fact that private sector interest and funding is rising 
to me gives me confidence to think that the this time around the rise in our price of productivity may be more sustainable than before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to quickly touch on another issue there. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we both were there at the Kata business meeting in, in Johannesburg, which is basically the meeting between the African partners on the, from Kadeb and the development partners. And there, Resax was tasked with making suggestions to harmonize the five different progress reporting mechanisms that inform the Kadeb results framework. And I counted there were actually five different um, of these frameworks, uh, these different mechanisms. Where are you at with this? Did you make any any progress so far, and where do you see difficulties with going through with this harmonization of different reporting tools? Yeah, yes, you're right. The the meeting called for the need to harmonize the various reporting mechanisms uh, toward um, the overall CADAP M and E framework, uh, looking at the indicators in that framework and aligning. Uh, specific country indic- specific program indicators to towards that framework. Now, uh, the the commitment or the mandate was actually given to three organisations: um, African Union Commission, uh, the Nepal Planning and Coordination Agency, as as well as RISAC. So, as a coordinator, I have been in touch with the NPCA and AUC. And we have planned for a first meeting in the first half of the of December uh, next month to to meet and work out a mechanism on how we shall achieve that harmonization. Uh, following that initial meeting, what is going to, pro- to happen later is to uh, to then get in touch with the various leaders of the different initiatives to work with them um, to ensure that their own reporting mechanism. Uh, talks to the overall CADAP M and E. That that most likely will happen uh, maybe in the uh, in the first quarter of 2013. Uh, maybe January or February we, we should be in shape or in position to score the leaders of these various initiatives uh, to a first meeting. Uh, the idea is to be able to report on the progress that we have made before the next PP, which is uh, I think planned for end of March 2013. So by then we should have made progress in that um, in that area. Um, I'm just wondering if these systems are in place. There's obviously, in practice, quite difficult to to put up some leverage or some incentive to actually make people change their course of action, their way of reporting. So how do you actually do that? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's not a, that's not something simple simple to do. But I'm hoping that the incentive is going to be the fact that they all report to the same forum, which is the CADAP PP. And so I, I think it would be good if every report, if every initiative is seen to be aligning to the overall CADAP uh, M and E framework. Uh, so I'm hoping that it won't be a difficult thing, a, a very difficult thing to do. I'm not assuming it will be easy, but I'm assuming that them seeing um, their indicators reported in such a high level forum would be an incentive for them to, to comply with the, the decision of the CADAP PP. Now, coming back to the Global Donor Platform, which you know is a network of 34 donor organizations altogether, um, agriculture research is currently one of the, of, of the focus areas of the platform. What do you think? Why should donors invest in agriculture research? And are there any specific ways to support the work of RESACs as such uh, for the Global Donor Platform? First of all, as the, the RESAC uh, Annual Trends and Outlook Report of 2012 points out, uh, the progress that has been made in raising agricultural productivity in Africa uh, has come out of uh, improving efficiency of the resource of the current resources that farmers are using and not from technical change. So what that tells us is is in the future productivity rise will have to come from technical change. And technical change requires that we prepare ourselves to generate 
technologies that can be made available to farmers. And that requires continuing and new investment in agricultural research. Now, if you look at the trends for agricultural research financing on the continent, at the best, they are stable, but we observe in many countries actually declining shares of agricultural research in the national budget. Hence, the need to have continued external support to agricultural research in Africa. And in the short run, as we try to talk to government to increase our cultural research funding, I think the moment partners uh, would be requested to continue funding our cultural research on the continent. Because short of that, then we may not be able to generate the technology that will sustain or increase our cultural productivity on the continent. Now that is for perhaps uh, for scientific research on agricultural research stations. Now when it comes to research, which does quality research, I make the same argument that to be able to improve the quality of policy planning, investment uh, planning, analysis, monitoring and review, we need quality research done and bring it to the table to inform discussions and policy choices uh, by whether African Union, uh, regional economic communities, or even countries. And that is where the continued support to research um, is called for. But also, like I mentioned, I mentioned in my earlier work, we want to take this one to the country level. And so support to research to be able to expand the work of establishing country tax nodes is going to be very critical to improve the quality of policy planning, analysis, reporting, and review and dialogue. As you may be aware, the initial funding that has come from, um, from two donors, IFAD and the, the Netherlands, uh, for the next three years will help us uh, support the establishment of country tax nodes, I think, in about uh, 15 countries. But you know there are 54 countries on the continent. So um, again, uh, more support will be needed for us to be able to expand our efforts to be able to cover all the 64 countries uh, on the continent. And more especially, the 30 plus countries that have already now signed their kind of compact and investment plan. Mm -hmm. I was thinking also, you know, looking at the nature of the global donor platform, as as a network is such, is there any connection that this sort of network character of the platform could help you spreading um, policy initiatives, guidelines, thoughts on how to influence policy to the better? Yes, I think uh, I'm not yet familiar with the operations or workings of the Global Donor Platform. So um, as I get uh, more into the job, that is an avenue I'm going to, to explore. And certainly, I think it would be a, a, good, a good platform for us to be able to popularize uh, research as, as, as a concept, but also research uh, together with its output. So as the products come out, I think we'll be looking at uh, exploring ways through which we can optimize or maximize the, uh, the opportunities that the global donor platform offers. And I will be looking forward to your advice to as how we could do that. Okay, thank you very much, Godric. Thank you, Pascal.